Coming to you live from the UTPA Fieldhouse in the three-time All-American City of Edinburgh, this is Bronx Basketball. Tonight, the Bronx lit to win their second in a row and complete the season sweep of the University of Missouri-Kansas City Kangaroos. Good evening again, everybody. Jonah Goldberg riding with you courtside as we count down to the start of tonight's WAC matchup between the Bronx and the Kangaroos. Bronx are coming off of a big, big win over Chicago State on Thursday, 71-68 in overtime to complete the season sweep. It was the Bronx's first home win in WAC play, snapping a six-game home losing streak and a five-game overall losing streak. It was the kind of game that the Bronx have been wont to lose this year. A close game late. I mean, how many times have we seen it? Just the Bronx previous game against Idaho, the Bronx fell in overtime, a game that they had the lead late in regulation. A player hit a three-pointer from three feet behind the arc. And I mean, it's it's been that kind of year where there have been so many games the Bronx could have won. They've been in almost every game this season. And they just haven't been able to close it until now. And, you know, this could be the kind of win that gets the Bronx rolling in the right direction. Four Bronx reached double figures in scoring for the ninth time this season. Led by graduate student Javon Farrell and junior Shaq Boga, who each had 16 points with four assists. Farrell also led the Bronx with eight rebounds. Watch Farrell tonight. He has three points from 1,000 for his career. Senior Josh Cleveland had another great game. He has been hot lately. Scored a season high 13 points, four of five, shooting five of six from the line, a couple of blocks as well. Alex Majewski, the freshman, made his second straight start double figures. Second straight game, 11 points. And then sophomore Shaq Hines played all 45 minutes, scoring nine points with a career-high 12 boards, four assists, two blocks, and one steal. On the other side of the ball, the Kangaroos enter this game on a four-game skid, coming off a 71-48 loss at New Mexico State. On Thursday, the Roos are playing their last game on a stretch of six of seven on the road after this weekend. They only have one road game remaining. Martez Harrison currently scores 16 and a half points per game, leads all freshman scorers in the WAC, and sits eighth in the nation among freshmen. The average would rank number two in freshman scoring ranks at UMKC in program history as well. Seniors Kirk Corver, Trinity Hall, Fred Chapman, and Nelson Kirksey are ranked in the top 50 in all-time scoring in UMKC history. Hall is at number 15, Corver 32nd. Chapman 38th and Kirksey is 39th. Trinity Hall also one of four players in school history to have 800 points, 400 boards, and 50 blocks. Kangaroos entering this game with a record of 7 and 16, 4 and 5 in whack play, Bronx 7 19, 3 and 8 in whack play. Second matchup of the season between these two teams. The Bronx beat Kansas City at Kansas City back on January 16th by a count of 78-66. It was a game that saw the Bronx shoot 58% from the field, their highest shooting percentage since February of 2009. And it was their first WAC win in program history. Bronx also played strong defense, held the Kangaroos to 34% shooting in that game, and of course it was a historic game played at Municipal Auditorium where the Bronx won the 1963 NAIA National Championships. Four Bronx reached double figures in that game as well. Hines, Boga, and Farrell. And Justin Leathers, who had 11 points on 5 of 8 shooting, 8 boards, 3 steals in his return home. Well, we'll take a timeout. Coming up on Bronx pregame, it's the coach's corner. I'll chat with Bronx head coach. Dan Hipsher. This is Bronx Basketball. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. 
Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put them somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Rolito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tax cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best. Welcome back to Bronx pregame. It's Coach's Corner. Jonah Goldberg with Bronx head coach Dan Hipsher. And Coach, uh, you, you finally won that kind of game that uh, you've been struggling in all year. You get the close one, the win over Chicago State. Well, no doubt. You know, didn't play our best, especially handling the ball. We have been a good team assist to turnover wise, but had a bad night the other night. But some other things happened. We shot the ball better. We made free throws, big free throws when we had to and uh, made some plays down the stretch. Boga hitting a big three, of course, to win the game. So uh, uh, happy to get it. I think it's good for our kids, you know, positive mental attitude playing in our building, and hopefully we can, we can tack on another one tonight. And that final play where Boga hit the three, how impressed were you with – uh, the passing, when the defense collapsed on Shaq Hines, he passed it to Majewski, who was pretty open at the top, but he had the alertness to pass it to Boga instead. Very good pass. Uh, Shaq made a good cut to get hold of the ball, which, again, like you say, brought the defense in. He kicked it out to Majewski, made a good pass, and, and then Majewski made a great pass to Shaq, and Shaq knocked down one with a couple guys running at him. And then, uh, really, we did a pretty good job on the last play, too. Uh, Shaq made a little mistake, let... Uh, uh, the shooter back to his left hand, and he got one off, but this time it didn't go in. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Majewski, what a couple of games he's had uh, since uh, entering the starting lineup. Yeah, he's doing a good job, and, and you know, for us, uh, making him or missing him, he gives us spacing. You know, it, it opens up the floor. People are worried about him. They're worried about his three-point shot. Uh, he's, he's scrapped for a few rebounds. He blocked a shot the other night. And he's, he's doing a good job for us. And defensively, you know, he's continuing to improve a little bit. So uh, just having that spacing, though, opening up the lane for Shaq and, those, and, and both Shaqs and, and Farrell to drive a little more. So it's been really good for us. What did you think of Javon Farrell's effort? Well, uh, had a struggle for the first 30 minutes. But the last 10 and uh, overtime, he was our horse. He did a great job, made great plays, uh, made every free throw. And, uh, you know, hit a huge three, I think, when we were down five, I believe, that uh, really got us back in it. So uh, very, very good and, and struggling few, through a few injuries. Now that uh, you picked up that win, that first whack win at home in front of a big crowd, you know, you've talked a lot about how, you know, the guys really want to win very badly for the fans at home. Well, is this kind of like a monkey off the back that could really get you rolling? I sure hope so. I hope the kids can now play to their potential at home and kind of get it off their back. They're such good kids. They want to win. They try. Uh, you know, my old college coach was here, and he used to talk about how hard the kids play. And I said, that's pretty much game in and game out. Some, sometimes they look a little lethargic because they're – tentative you know but if they'll just play through that and, and get going and ho hopefully we can grow from that last win. Kansas City round two what'd you learn about them the first time that you used tonight? Well two things they pounded us on the board and they drove us to death and uh, they didn't convert a lot of them which was good for us and we shot a good percentage but we can't rely on that again tonight we've got to keep them out of the lane and we've got to rebound the basketball. All right coach thanks a lot and good luck. Thanks Jonah. That was Bronx head coach Dan Hipscher. That'll do it for Bronx pregame. We'll step aside for a break. When we come back, we'll be starting lineups and opening tip. This is Bronx basketball. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. 
March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. Well outside to the backstop. Everybody running real scores the tying run. Swinging a liner past the third baseman into left field. The base hit. Front swing. Front swing. Front swing. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Brave and bold, silver and gold. We are on a mission. Aggie up. Brock Country just got a whole lot bigger. Mighty Wolverines at UVU. Join the herd. Lopes up. Bold moves, big season, grew up. We are the new gold standard. We will be champions. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. John Goldberg riding with you courtside as we count down to the start of tonight's game between the UTPA Bronx and the Kansas City Kangaroos. It's our homecoming game. A bunch of the fans have already walked in and plenty more fans are still outside at the tailgate which is wrapping up right now so they're continuing to file in. I think a bunch of them heard the national anthem through the door and the that should be the the key for them to realize what time it is, and they'll be on their way in shortly. So it's going to be a great crowd tonight, hopefully a great game for them to see, and it's time for the starting lineups. And we will start with visiting Kangaroos, starting at the point guard position, a 5'11", 185-pound freshman out of Kansas City, Missouri. Number 12, Martez Harrison. At shooting guard, a 6'6", 175-pound junior out of Kansas City, Missouri. Number 13, Frank Williams. The small forward, a 6'3", 195-pound senior out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Number one, Nelson Kirksey. At power forward, a 6'7", 210-pound senior out of Kansas City, Kansas. Number 40, Trinity Hall. And at center, a 6'9", 230-pound senior out of Cleveland, Ohio. Number 21, Fred Chapman. Head coach of the Kangaroos in his first season is Kareem Richardson. He's assisted by Angus Thorpe, Jason Sauter, and Connor Hampton. And now, ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet. The Kangaroos into this game with a record of 7 and 16. They've lost their last four. Four and six in WAC play. They're four and nine on the road, three and three on the road in the WAC. As for those hosts, UTPA Bronx. Line up the usual suspects at the point guard position, a 5'11", 170-pound junior out of St. Louis, Missouri. Number five, Shaquille Boga. At shooting guard, a 6'5", 215-pound grad student out of Woodbridge, Virginia. Number three, Javon Farrell. The small forward, a 6'7", 195-pound sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois. Number 24, Shaquille Hines. At power forward, a 6'6", 180-pound freshman out of Chicago, Illinois. Number 35, Alex Majewski. At center, a 6'6", 225-pound senior out of Houston, number 25, Josh Cleveland. The head coach of the Bronx in his first season is Mr. Dan Hipsher. The associate head coach is Andy Hipsher. The assistant coaches are Ellen McCroy and Cody Hopkins. The Bronx enter this game with a record of 7-19, but they won last time out. The Bronx 3-8 in WAC play, 2-8 at home to 1-4 in WAC play at home.
The Kangaroos are in their road blue tops and bottoms with the yellow numerals on the front and on the back. Lettering on the front spelling out Kansas City above the number, all that in white trim. The Bronx in their home white tops and bottoms with the green numerals on the front and on the back. Green letters spelling out Bronx on the front above the number, all that in orange trim. Nike logo on the right shoulder, the bucking Bronx by the left knee. The black logo on the back just below the small of the neck. All right, fans, make some noise for the opening. Josh Cleveland taking the tip against Fred Chapman. Check that. Taking against Trinity Hall. It's up, it's batted around, that goes into the hands of Chapman. And we're underway, moving from left to right across your computer screen with the Kangaroos in blue. Hall with the basketball at the top, pass over to the right wing, that's Frank Williams Jr. Now back to the top to Hall. Hall gives it up the left, now comes back top Williams, right wing Hall. Hall comes inside, Hall throws it up, bounce around, doesn't go. Rebound pulled in by the Bronx, that is Shaq Hines. Back we go the other way. Head to Farrell. Farrell three points from a thousand. Hits it over the left wing, Majewski. Back to the top to Farrell, the right wing, Boga. Boga, top to Farrell, 4,000. Doesn't go. And the rebound pulled in by Chapman. Back we go the other way. Kirksey with the ball at the top. Farrell out to guard him. Ball comes to the left. Williams. Hall at the foul line. Turns around and feeds Harrison. Comes along the baseline. That's Kirksey. Kirksey takes a step in. He's trying to move around. Finds the pass. Comes out to the left. That's Harrison. Harrison to his right. Harrison comes in. Throws up the contested layup and gets it to go. The Kangaroos strike first. It's two to nothing with a minute 15 gone by. Bogle with the basketball on the right wing. Pass left wing, Hines. Hines steps right, feeds Bogle right wing for three. Too strong. Misses the rim, hits off the backboard into the hands of Kirksey. Here come the Kangaroos. Kirksey works his way in, tries to move his shot. And it ends up in the hands of Chapman as it may have been deflected. Boga gets the rebound, gives it to Hines, back to Boga, and the Bronx will push. Boga coming through traffic, tries to pass it inside for Cleveland. It goes diving to try and save it, can't reach. Goes out of bounds, it's Kangaroos basketball. 18-14 to play, opening half, 2-0 Kangaroos. Bronx playing a full court man-to-man -man as they wait for this inbounds. Wipe up a little early moisture. <laughs> Harrison running the offense. Pass up Ed Williams. Lobs it inside Chadman. Chapman gives it to Williams off his fingertips. Hines gets it and he's racing it up the court. Hines along the wing, feeds Boga, baseline coming in and it's lost, comes loose. Here come the Kangaroos and a foul. Kirksey with a head of steam, got tripped. Williams will inbound, stays right of the basket for Kansas City. Deep inbounds, comes out to the backcourt. And Harrison will start up the play. Pass over the right wing, Hall. Hall, corner, Kirksey for three, it's good. Five to nothing, UMKC. Kansas City, Missouri, the home of these kangaroos. Hines with the basketball at the top. Goes to the left wing, Alex Majewski. Majewski. Has had early threes in each of the last two games. Boga, the teardrop doesn't go. The rebound pulled in by Chapman. Back we go the other way. Almost three minutes gone. Kirksey. Bounce to Harrison. Pass inside. There's the easy layup for Williams. And it's a 7 nothing lead for Kansas City. Boga. Right wing Hines. Coming in, throws it up, and in! Bronx are on the board, it's at three minutes and five seconds, but it's 
And a foul. Skill Boga. Lori Toivonen and Josh Cleveland takes a seat for the Bronx. And inbound stage left of the basket. And it's almost into the backcourt. Harrison able to pick it up. And, and an offensive three second violation called against Kansas City. Or, no, I guess the clock was off. I guess by three seconds. Not sure. Now they're going over the table. It must be a clock issue. Yep, clock was three seconds off. So they take it down to 1646. That's the three seconds that I heard. And it's Kansas City ball. Harrison is the ball straight away up top. Steps to the right matchup with Boga. Pass comes left wing, Kirksey. Kirksey, calling for help. Sent to Harrison, racing in. Pass out left wing, Kirksey. Kirksey, top of the whack logo, loses the handle. Picked up by Toivonen, gives it over to Boga. Boga, right wing, Majewski thought about it from the NBA. Arkansas pass over to Boga at the top, now the right wing, Farrell. Farrell sitting at 997 career points. Up top to Hines. That's 401 with UTPA, all the rest with UMass. Farrell, right wing, thought about it, comes in and said, stops, pops, got it. 7-4, Farrell is one point away. His next score gets him to 1,000. Trap in the corner, nice job by Toivon and Majewski. Pass comes out to Harrison. 20 on the shot clock for Kansas City, 15.45 game clock. Pass comes in underneath, there's another double team underneath the basket. Errant layup doesn't go, the rebound picked up by Kansas City. Ball underneath Chapman, he ends up with a dunk. He waited out Farrell, and once Farrell was by him, had the open look. Toivon in, out to Boga right wing, up top to Farrell. Hines, left wing Boga, left corner, Farrell for three, got it! 1,000 points, Javon Farrell! And it's nine to seven. Out of bounds, timeout on the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, with that three-pointer, Javon Farrell now has more than 1,000 career points as a member of the UTA Bronx. And they recognize Farrell now. And he gets a nice round of applause as we hit immediate timeout. 15.05 to play. It's 9-7, Kansas City. You're watching Bronx Basketball. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital at Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put them somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tack Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tack cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tack Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best.
Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. 15.05 to play. Opening half. Bronx down 9-7. Javon Farrell with a jumper and a three. Gets him to 1,002 career points. Kirksey hits the first free throw. Kirksey from the line this season, 72% free throw shooter. Kangaroos as a team at 63%. Second shot off the front iron, and the rebound comes out to Farrell. Farrell works it down the court. Hines on the right wing. Farrell spins his way in, throws it up. Doesn't go, but a foul. Farrell heads the line for free throws. Well, Farrell's got a two, he's got a three. Now he's looking for a pair of ones. First one's in. Two point game. Farrell, 73% free throw shooter, 76% in conference play. Bronx has a team at 66%, 67 in conference play. Farrell's second is good. One point game. 14.44 to play. Opening half. Kirksey with the basketball for Kansas City. Ball cycles to Williams, right corner. Jacoby Bledsoe, now out to Kirksey. Kirksey baseline gets trapped by Leather. He's traveling all over the place and it gets called. It's Bronx ball. Well, now the Bronx can take the lead with the basket here. Substitution for the Kangaroos, number 12, Martez Harrison. Replaces number one, Nelson Kirksey. And number 40, Trinity Hall. Replaces number 13, Frank Williams Jr. Trinity Hall back in, Frank Williams Jr. takes a seat. Kirksey also to the bench. As Isaac Kruer is in. Kruer. Farrell lays it in. Bronx have the lead. 11-10 and Javon Farrell off to a great start. He's got nine. Well, he didn't just reach 1,000 points. He has blown past it. Harrison. Left wing Johnson. That's Caleb Johnson over to Harrison on the right wing. 10. Well poked by who else? Farrell. He goes diving. Saves it. Gets it back to Leathers. He'll bring it up the court. Now hand it off to Farrell. What a game Farrell is having so far. We're six and a half minutes in. Hines with the basketball on the right wing. Up top to Leathers. Thought about it. Pass right wing, that's LJ McIntosh. Bounce pass, that's Toivonen. Toivonen, skip pass, left corner. Leathers for three, too strong. And it goes straight into the hands of Harrison. Back we go the other way. Johnson, baseline jumper doesn't go, the rebound Hines. Fires it ahead to Farrell. Toivonen. The Leathers now out to McIntosh, left corner, three, good! 14-10. Kansas City scored the first seven points of this game. The Bronx have responded with a 14-3 run. It's all 40 to go in the first. Harrison with the ball in the right wing, pass to the top to Hall. Hall back to Harrison. 10 on the shot clock. 7, 6, 5. Pass comes to Bledsoe. Bledsoe, the contested jumper, doesn't go. A rebound comes out. Who's it off of? Off Kansas City, it's Bronx ball. It is Bronx basketball. Substitution for the Bronx, number 35, Alex Majewski. Places number 32, Justin Leathers. Alex Majewski back in. Justin Leathers takes a seat. 12-16 to play. Bronx up 14-10. And number 
McIntosh jumper from the foul line doesn't go. Rebound pulled in by Hall. It's it up to Kirksey, back to Hall at the top. Goes over the right wing, Harrison. A lot of quick passing for this Kansas City team today. Kirksey at the top. Kirksey works his way in. Bounce pass comes to the baseline. Williams, the fall away, doesn't go. Rebound offensive to Kansas City, and it's put back in by Chapman. And the Ruse within two. Farrell the hot hand at the top to the left wing, Hines. Toivin at the top, no look pass, McIntosh, no look, Farrell right wing. Farrell takes a step, Majewski, NBA three on the way. Off the back iron, long rebound out to Hines. And the Bronx will reset with 11.20 to go. Farrell over to Majewski, or Toivin in rather, down low to Hines. Hines gets doubled, has to dribble, stuck in the corner, gets it out to Toivin and up top, Majewski, another three, and this one doesn't go either. Rebound Chapman, back we go the other way with Kansas City in blue. Harrison, Williams, doesn't fall. Chapman battling for the rebound, comes into the hands of the Bronx. McIntosh. Top of the key, right wing to Farrell. Then to his right to Hines. Top of the key, McIntosh. Left wing, Majewski. And then to Farrell along the foul line. Farrell works his way in, lays it in! Oh, you knew that was going in after he cut around the defense. Farrell has been automatic today. He's got 11 points, 5 of 6 from the field. And the Bronx lead by 4 with 10.20 to play in the first. Kirksey. On the left wing, Williams. Comes back to the right wing, and Harrison nails the 3. Bronx lead cut to 16.15. Midway through the first half. Farrell the left wing, Hines. Hines works right, beats Toivinen. Right elbow leaner off the back iron. Rebound Kirksey, here come the Ruse. Head to Harrison, with the head of Steen. Kicks it out, left wing, Williams for three. No good, long rebound, McIntosh. McIntosh bringing it straight up the court, works his way through traffic, stops in center court and gives it off to Farrell. Nine and a half minutes to play in the first. Chant of Go Bronx Go begins for the UTPA crowd. And what? Farrell seemed to knock down Toivonen, in, and they're calling a foul on Kirksey. And Kansas City's head coach, Green Richardson, is not happy, and understandably so. Well, that means we're up against the timeout. We'll step aside with the Bronx up 16-15, 9.32 to play in the first. This is Bronx Basketball. is calling the 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. Two, two. Well outside to the backstop. Everybody running. Rio scores the tying run. Swinging a liner past the third baseman in the left field. The base hit. Front swing. Front swing. Front swing. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Back we are at the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. 9.32 to play in the first. 
An exciting start to this game. 16-15 Bronx. Kansas City, the first seven points of the game. The Bronx responded with a 12-3 run. Out of the timeout it is Bronx basketball. Check that, it was a 14-3 run. Good, and the foul. Boga. Bronx lead is three, could be four in a second. His first team's third. Javon Fell has been unconscious so far, already 11 points. Four or five from the field with a three and a couple of free throws. Bogus free throw is good. Three point play, 19 15, Bronx. Harrison, pass over to his left to Bledsoe. Bledsoe loses it. Bronx converged to try and steal it. He picks it up, gets to Williams. Ball cycles to the left corner. Hall back out to Williams. Now to the right side, Bledsoe. Bledsoe works his way straight away. Now comes over to the right. Harrison dribbles left, gives it to Williams. Now to the left wing, Harrison. Check that, it's Bledsoe. Bledsoe, now Williams to Harrison. Seven on the shot clock. Six, five, four. Takes the deep three, and it's wide left. Rebound Farrell, here he comes. Farrell coming in one on two, kicks it out left wing, Boga for three. Too strong, the rebound pulled in by Kansas City. Three on one, developing Boga comes to make it a three two, but the layup is good regardless. And it's 19-17. After Bledsoe's basket. Leather's right wing, he's open, they're giving him space up top to Boga, right wing Farrell takes the three. He doesn't go. Leathers came in for the rebound, couldn't hold on, ends up getting picked up by Hall. And here comes Kansas City left to right across your computer screen. Ball comes up to the right wing, Williams. Williams skip pass over the Bronx bench and into the first row of seats. That means it's out of bounds. It's a turnover and it's Bronx ball. 8-14 to play in the opening half of the Bronx leading 19-17. John Burke in, Martez Harrison out for Kansas City. Student section getting pretty full across from us. A couple of flags in the stands. Always love it when they bring the flags. Cleveland has it on the right wing and now a whistle away from the ball. Foul against Bledsoe and it'll be Bronx ball when we return. 7.56 to play in the opening half. The Bronx with a 19-17 lead. This is Bronx basketball. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital at Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tax cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. 7.56 to play in the opening half of the Bronx up 19-17 over Kansas City. Bronx basketball stage left to the basket with Shaquille Hines. 
Bounce comes out to Boga on the right wing. Boga sends it inside. Farrell, who else lays it in? 21-17. Farrell's got 13. Hall, Burke, miss, and a rebound, Bronx. I think he has 15. I think my live stats are a little behind. Well, whatever he has, he's got a lot more. He gets another layup. Bronx lead 23-17. I think he actually has 17 points right now. Hall, top to Burke. Burke, left wing Hall for three. No good, a rebound Farrell. Boga bringing it up the court. Farrell. Stops, gives it out to left wing Hines. Top to Boga. Left wing Farrell. Farrell along the baseline. Tries to spin his way in. Gives it back out to Leathers. Five on the shot clock. Ball for Hines. It's off his hand and it comes out to Williams. Williams gives it out to Bledsoe for three. Air ball. Chadman picks it up though with 27. Triple team on Chadman, who was able to break loose and then left open for three. He misses it. Leathers the rebound. Back we go the other way. Cleveland, top to Farrell, left wing Boga. Top of the key to Hines. Left wing Leathers for three, it's good! Justin Leathers from downtown. Boy, the Bronx have been trying to get him going. And they can get Justin Leathers going. That's gonna make this team so much better, especially the way Alex Majewski's been playing lately too. Really adds to the depth that this team can have. There's the three ball up right wing, it's good for Burke. 26-20. Bogo with the basketball at the top of the key. Whistle, and it's coming the other way. Personal foul and offensive foul on number 32, Justin Leathers. Offensive foul on Justin Leathers, his first. Team's third. That's three on the Bronx by way of comparison Kansas City with four with 5.06 to go in the first. Harrison in the right wing Kirksey. Now comes to the left wing Burke. Burke back up top Kirksey. Left wing Harrison. Right wing Kirksey. Now to Harrison. Pass comes to the right wing. That's Kirk Corver for three. No good. Rebound saved by Kansas City. McIntosh saves it, and he luckily got down just in time because Corver swiped for the ball. He almost took McIntosh's head off. Over to Farrell on the left wing. Pass to his left to Leathers in the corner. McIntosh open look at a three. No good. And then the strong side rebound. Here comes Burke for Kansas City. Harrison now out to Kirksey. Kirksey trying to spin his way in. Top of the key, that's Corver. All down low, there's the layup that's good in the foul for Hall. Count the basket free throw coming up. When we return, 3.56 to play opening half, and it's 26 to 20 Bronx. This is Bronx Basketball.
Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the Big Dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. Dr. Pena does The 2-2. Two -two. Well outside to the backstop. Everybody running real. Scores the tying run. Swing and a liner. Pass from third base. Spin into left field. The base hit. Front swing. Front swing. Front swing. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Three fifty-six to play, opening half, twenty-six twenty-two, Kansas City. My name is Jonah Goldberg, and I'm riding on the Bronc with you. Here at the UTPA Fieldhouse. Trinity Hall up the line trying to convert on a three-point play. Hall, 66% from the line this season. It's his first trip today. Hall. Makes the free throw. One possession game. Lori Toivin and in Josh Cleveland out. Farrell, Boga, McIntosh, Toivin in, leathers the five for the Bronx. It's Burke, Harrison, Williams, Hall, and Corver for the Kangaroos. Farrell with the basketball on the left wing. Sends into leathers. Foul line jumper. Bounces, doesn't go. Rebound pulled in by Harrison. Fires it up ahead to Burke. Burke loses it. Toivin in, bats it away, gets it up to Boga. Boga racing down the court, stops, feeds it back for Farrell on the right wing, thought about it, did it. Instead, Boga takes the three, and he nails it! 29-23, Bronx. 3.20 to go in the opening half. And City with the basketball to Williams. Now comes inside. There's the hop, skipping a shot. That's no good but a foul for Hall. Hall misses on the free throw. We've got one more. Jumper is good, Shaq Boga. Chadman gets it to go. 29-26. Two and a half minutes to play in the half. Check that. 31-26. Farrell. The foul line jumper. 33-26. Farrell's closing in on 20 in this half. Pretty sure he's got 19. The stats say 17, but it's missing a basket. I'm pretty sure it's his that they're missing. They'll fix that at halftime as 
Chapman slams it in. Those of you watching at home will understand the whole process works. Basically, it can be fixed, but it's really hard to do unless you have a stoppage. We'll get 20 minutes at halftime for the folks to enter that basket. It'll only take a couple of seconds, but it just, there's no, you don't have enough time at immediate timeout, usually. And Boga coming in for a shot gets fouled. Two free throws coming up. Trinity Hall picks up his first foul. Five on Kansas City in what has been a low fouling half, six and five. Have a great rhythm in this half because of it. Boga misses on the first. Substitution for the Bronx, number 24, Shaquille Hines, and number 25, Josh Cleveland, enter the game. For the Kangaroos, number one, Nelson Kirksey, enters the game. Second free throw is good. Minute and a half to go. Kirksey. Williams working his way in, throws up, swatted by Hines! And right into a cheerleader! Who caught it? That was a big smile on her face. John Burke replaces Nelson Kirksey for Kansas City. Bronx basketball. Minute 23 left in the half. Bogle with the ball on the right wing. This is the baseline. Comes back out up top. McIntosh, quick trigger. Three. He doesn't go. Cleveland grabs the offensive board and gets the bucket. 36-28 Bronx. Minute left in the half. And a foul. Hall was coming in. It's on Leathers. He's got two. Seven on the Bronx. Trinity Hall shooting two. Hall is already two for three today. It's on the first. Kansas City now four of six from the line. Bronx three of four, but not been a lot of free throws early. Off the back iron on the second, goes out, and it's Bronx ball. 45.4 ticks the clock remaining in half number one. So 10.4 second differential between shot clock and game clock. Boga races it down, stops to the wing, gets the Hines underneath the Cleveland, who slams it in with a 40! 38-29 Bronx. And Kansas City is gonna call timeout with the shot clock off and 30.1 seconds left. This crowd getting loud at the field house. The Bronx have opened up their largest lead of the night at nine points. Kansas City will try and draw up a play to score on this final possession of the half, whereas the Bronx hope to set up their defense to prevent just that from happening. I think that's the homecoming king and queen you just saw on the screen. Or at least two of the candidates. They'll be crowning the winners at halftime. That's why we have the longer halftime today. There's so much to do for homecoming. You always have to have the longer halftime for homecoming. Just gotta. Last year we got to honor Luke Jackson and Bale his retired number up in the Raptors. That was awesome. And then we got to honor the 1963 National Championship team on their 50th anniversary and they all they were all here, they got they brought out their trophy. What a moment that was. It was probably the first time a lot of them have held that trophy in 50 years. 
can't imagine the emotions that were going through their head. I don't even know if they knew the trophy was going to be out there. I didn't even know. Dr. Nelson kind of surprised them. The president of the university all of a sudden brought it out. 12 seconds left in the half. Bronx hedging the bets. Bledsoe has six, five, four, three. Pass comes right wing. Williams for three. In and out. Rebound Cleveland. And that's how the half ends. The Bronx with a 38-29 lead. Well, we'll take a timeout. Coming up on the Bronx Halftime Report, we'll take a look at your first half stats. We'll be joined by WAC Commissioner Jeff Hurd for a little bit. And then we're also going to get to see a clip from this week's edition of Bronx Country. Bronx by nine. This is Bronx Basketball. is calling the 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. Well outside to the backstop. Everybody running. Rio scores the tying run. Swinging a liner pass from third baseman in the left field. The base hit. Bronx win. Bronx win. Bronx win. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Joe Goldberg riding with you. At the start of halftime, the Bronx have opened up a nine-point advantage. They lead 38-29. We're going to start things off today with an interview with the commissioner of the Western Athletic Conference in town this weekend, the one and only Jeff Hurd, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, John. I appreciate that. So, what exactly are you doing here? <laughs> Well, I try to, this fall, especially because it's our first year in our new configuration, I've, I've made an effort to get to each campus at least once during the season, and during the, including the fall parts of the, of the season, and, you know, to visit with, with different people. Today, I, I met with the uh, with President Nelson. I uh, spent quite a bit of time with Chris King, the Director of Athletics. I've met and talked to, uh, to, to Dan Hipshire, the men's basketball coach. Uh, saw one of the baseball games and met several boosters. Uh, attended the Hall of Fame luncheon, and basically what I try to do is just get a feel for uh, some of the issues that may or may not be going on here, how things are going, what uh, what we can do as a conference office uh, to help uh, all of our all of our institutions in any way possible, and quite quite honestly, just to get a better feel for for the institutions, for the cities, for the environment, for everything involved with us as a conference. And yeah, this is my, my eighth visit. Uh, I have one more to go before the conference tournament, and then I'll be, then I can say I've been to all nine institutions and had very good visits at all of them. Now, do you strategically plan which uh, weekends you're going to come? Because it, 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 it can't be just coincidence that you're here for baseball opening weekend, the Hall of Fame, and homecoming all at the same time. Well, actually, it's, it's not a coincidence. Uh, before the season started, I sent a note out to all of our schools, and I said, you know, that I plan to visit, uh, but I would do so strategically if, if there are certain events that are going on that you think would be important for me to attend or that think would be uh, good for me to attend, then let me know, and I'll try to 
arranged my schedule around that. So in this particular case, uh, Chris invited me down because it was homecoming weekend because there was the Hall of Fame induction, induction luncheon today. Now, it just so happened that it was also the start of the baseball season at the time uh, that I made my, my plans to come here. I didn't even realize that baseball was starting uh, this particular weekend. So that was coincidence, but it was a good one because I was got to see the opener last night and, and part of a doubleheader today. So, you know, that was just an added bonus from my standpoint. What is the state of the WAP? Well, we're new, and, and we're uh, you know we're growing. We have challenges. There's no question about that. We have some some issues that we still have to address. Uh, but I like the direction we're headed. I like the enthusiasm of our members. Uh, uh, I like the the direction that we're headed. Now, all that said, we still we really need to get through a full year of competition. We'll sit down at our spring meetings in May. Uh, they're going to be held in Kansas City with our women's administrators, with our directors of athletics, and with our faculty reps. In, and we'll have a, a pretty heavy agenda, and we'll talk about the year. We'll review it. Uh, we'll try to point out some of the issues that we, that we have to address and, and figure out a way to do it. When you have these types of meetings, is it... Do you just run the show and you and you mentioned you have an agenda that do, or there will be an agenda. It's not your personal agenda. And, uh, or is it, does the floor get open and you say it and they have all the ADs and uh, the SWAs and all those people, are they are they really running the show or like how does that work? No, they actually are. We have, uh, the way we're structured, uh, you know, we have a uh, our board of directors level. We have a, a chair of the board and that in this particular year is Father Steve Sundberg at at Seattle University, so the way that works is his athletic director and SWA are actually the chairs of their respective groups, as would the faculty rep be. So when we have our meetings, the con the, the conference office develops the agenda, with uh, and we cer certainly solicit uh, topics from our uh, you know, from our member institutions, but the actual meetings uh, are chaired by by the respective schools. Now I attend obviously as as the commissioner of the league and some of my staff is there and we certainly spend a, a great deal of time also being involved in the meetings but the schools actually do uh, do run them and uh, you know, we offer our, our assistance and our input as we as we go along what does the future hold for the lack well i think it's a good future now that said uh, you know we have to get better there's no question we have to get better competitively we have to increase our membership and in my mind at least two more uh, within the next you know 12 to 18 months and, and we have to have some patience. We have to, we have to grow the league, and you can't. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, we have to, we have to improve some areas. Uh, when I when I say that, from areas from a conference office standpoint, we need to increase our exposure. We need to increase our revenue streams, and we need to, to get some more stability in our membership. But again, that doesn't happen. You know, it does When I wake up tomorrow morning, you know, there won't be a lot of change from today. But as I look forward, as we try to plan for the future. Uh, you know, those are all things that we, we try to address on a long-term basis, and we try to plan for that. And, you know, I'm hopeful that within the, you know, say a one- to three-year time frame, uh, that we'll be able to be much more, uh, well, I won't say competitive from a national standpoint than we are currently. Uh, we have to do that because we want to be a player on a national scene. We want to be, we don't want to be a one-bid league for the, uh, for the NCAA basketball tournament, men's or women's. We want to be a multiple bid league, and the only way we're going to do that is to get better. And so and I think our coaches know that, our administrators know that, and so that's a goal that we have, and we're going to, uh, we're going to try, try to develop some things, some methods that will help us get there. What has impressed you the most uh, now that you've had this campus visit here at DTPA? I think the enthusiasm, enthusiasm of staff, uh, enthusiasm of some of the boosters that I have met, uh, and just the, the general feeling that they're, uh, I, I guess, a, for lack of a better way to say it, kind of a light at the end of the tunnel situation. A lot of our members, you got to remember, uh, this particular year, six of them are brand new. The seventh one is only in its second year. So we, quite frankly, are still trying to get to know each other a little bit, trying to understand more about uh, about the league and some of the dynamics of it. We have some geographic challenges, which which everybody knows, but that can also be that can also be a positive. And so you know, our, we, we've got to kind of circle the wagons a little bit and, and just. You know, learn, learn from the first year. Okay, what went well, what didn't go so well, what issues have to be addressed as we move forward and get input from all our people, not just the administrators, but all from our coaches groups. Uh, whether it's basketball, baseball, golf, whatever it might be, all our coaches groups also either meet in person 
or they have a conference call to discuss their particular seasons and any issues they might face. So all that input kind of goes into one jar, and that's when we get together in May, we discuss it all. All right, Jeff, well, I know you uh, are due on the Kansas City broadcast as well, so I will let you go and go over to them, and uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Joan. I appreciate it. Jeff Hurd, Commissioner of the Western Athletic Conference, joining us at the half. The Bronx with a 38-29 lead. We'll be back with your first half stats in a moment. This is Bronx Basketball. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tax cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. About eight and a half minutes left in the half. Is there a... They extended halftime to get through all the homecoming promotions. They have fixed the stats if you're watching on the live stats, which is perfect timing. Because it is now time to go over our first half stats. And we will start with visiting Kansas City. Leading the team in scoring with eight points is Fred Chapman on four or five shooting, five rebounds. After that, five points for Harrison, five for Hall, four for Kirksey, three points for Burke, two each for Williams and Bledsoe. Kansas City, 11 of 26 from the field, 42%, three of 10 from behind the arc, four of seven from the line. 13 rebounds for Kansas City, 16 for the Bronx. Bronx London scoring by Javon Farrell. He's got 17 points already. Seven of nine shooting, one of three from behind the arc, two of two from the line, two boards, an assist and a steal. Nine points, Shaq Boga, three of five shooting, a three and two free throws, two boards, three assists and a steal. Four points, Josh Cleveland, three LJ McIntosh, three boards already for McIntosh, three points, Justin Leathers. Bronx 15 of 27 from the field, that's 56%. You know, they shot 58% against Kansas City their first time, and they're doing the exact same thing again tonight. Four of 12 from behind the arc, and four of five from the line. Points in the paint. Bronx lead that 16-14 off turnovers. Bronx lead 9-3. Second chance points, two each. Bench points, six for the Bronx, five for the Kangaroos. Give you all these numbers, but the only ones that matter. 38-29, the Bronx lead the Kangaroos. 
at the half. Well, as I would hope you all know by now, the Bronx have a regional show known as Bronx Country. It airs every single week. 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. Fridays, 11 a.m. Comcast Sports Net Houston throughout the week. On uh, Gallon Cable Network, Far Television, and 956sports.com. And, of course, on our very own YouTube channel as well. I'm going to show you a clip from this week's edition of Broad Country. Not the whole clip because we don't have enough time for that. Only got six minutes left in halftime. But part of the clip that takes a look around the world of Bronco athletics beyond the basketball court and the baseball diamond. Every week it seems that UTPA women's soccer comes closer and closer to being a reality. Last week we showed you renderings of their future home. In the near future, we'll be able to tell you a little bit about their recruits. As for right now, we can tell you about the newest addition to their staff. The Bronx welcomed Lindsey Vera as an assistant coach. Vera was a star player at NC State, earning all ACC freshman honors and then all ACC second team honors three times. The two-year captain was also an all-region selection in 2006 and team MVP in 2007. Vera went on to play professionally before returning to NC State as a volunteer assistant coach for two seasons. She spent the last five years with the Capital Area Soccer League in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm just really excited to be here and I think um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for the school to finally um, add women's soccer to the list of sports and I think this area is dying for some soccer and I believe it's going to be a successful first year alongside Coach Glad Bagaru and um, I'm just happy to have this opportunity to uh, join the Bronx. I needed somebody that's experienced, that is uh, played at a very high level, that is coached at a very high level, that can work with me hand in hand to take this program forward. I always want to surround myself with excellent people um, and Lindsay was the first person that I wanted to work with me. I, I felt she was the type of, of, of assistant, coach, person that can enhance our program and take us to the next level. This is a long-term project that we're engaging in and we need to have the best people around us. Big weekend for UTPA track and field. They send one runner to the ultra-competitive David Hemery Valentine Invitational up at Boston University and he ran quite a race. Martin Cass shattered the program record for the mile run by finishing in 4.01.04, the 17th fastest time in a field of 307 runners. Cass's time, 10 seconds better than the previous program record. But I'll do you one better. The graduate student's time is the 26th fastest in the nation and best in the WAC this season. He felt great. That was uh, one of my goals this year, earlier in the year. So. I was, I was very happy. That was not my first goal because I really wanted to go fast and if, if I was hitting the time, like, you know, get close to four minutes, obviously I was going to get the school record. But it's, it's a great achievement and, uh, and I'm really happy I, I did that. Uh, I mean, it was a sensational race. He ran, executed the race plan. He went out and stayed conservative, kind of got to the back of the pack, just worked his way through the entire time, ran really even splits. It was a very, very good race. It was, it was impressive. Uh, in Boston, that was something else. Uh, 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 it was a great competition. Well, I was in the third hit, meaning that uh, if you take the, the, the time, the sitting time, I mean, the time that your coach engaged you in or the, your past times, um, there were two hits of 10 or 12 people that are faster than me. So I was in the third hit. Uh, so, I mean, that means that uh, there is some competition there more than 300 uh, people participating. Uh, it's, it's nothing uh, usual and uh, we had to go to Boston to, to do that and I'm really glad that the, the coaches gave me this opportunity. There were some professional athletes and some of the best. The, the NCAA leading time right now came out of that meet this weekend in 357, but there was eight guys that broke four minutes in the mile and for him to run 401 is still an extremely elite time. That puts him 26 right now in the country. and. Uh, so he, he was racing against the best of the best for sure. On to men's tennis. The Bronx visiting 64th ranked Arkansas for a doubleheader. Match number one was pretty tight. Despite the 1-6 loss, Joseph Bishop picked up a big win at number six. But I will point out that his was one of three matches to go the distance. Ricardo Hopker at number four and Mauricio Fasado at number five also going three sets. 
Chain Pendini with a tight one at number two as well. Impressive match against a tough opponent for the Bronx. Second match of the day didn't go as well, although the score was the same, 1-6. Joseph Bishop again with the winner at number six for the Bronx, taking it in a super tie break after the match was already decided. It's just a good fight. It was, it was fun playing indoors. Uh, some of the guys had very limited experience playing indoors. One of my guys never played indoors before. So uh, to play against a team, that a program that's built around playing indoors most of the year, it was uh, a little bit of a shock at first. We had to really weather the storm and just get used to it, get used to the lighting and, and the speed and the surroundings and everything. But we settled in uh, pretty good and put up a terrific fight in the first match. Uh, but fought really well in the second match as well. Just uh, some some bruises and nicks caught up to us uh, in the second match. But also because Arkansas uh, <laughs> put it to us uh, pretty good. But that's you know that's what they're supposed to do, and we we did the best we could. Uh, so it was a, an amazing experience for us. It really was. Just spending that time on the road together early in the season uh, and, and just going against a nationally ranked team and program uh, with the coaching staff, that is, that's very good. Uh, so it was good. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of the boys. We, we used it. Uh, it was good motivation for us. The Bronx then traveled to SMU and played another very competitive match. That fell 1-6 as well. The lone point came at number five, where Alejandro Sanoa picked up the win in straight sets. Two matches went three sets. Heck of an effort at number one by Juan Cruz Soria, facing the number 73 ranked singles player in the country and forcing a third set. The Bronx are back in action on Friday at 10 a.m. when they host Lamar. Everybody battled. I mean, it just wasn't. We had a chance to, to pick up a few of those singles victories. The doubles, uh, just one break. It's been happening. The guys know it. It's a story. We, we got to continue to uh, execute our serves better in our returns. Uh, so, you know, so the double started off, you know, we lost that point, but, but we competed. And singles, they got on us pretty quick, but then the guy. If you want to hear the rest of what Coach Stokes had to say, as well as get updates on the rest of the teams that were featured in that segment, visit utpabronx.com and check out our YouTube channel to see the whole segment and the whole show. There were segments on basketball and baseball as well. Josh Cleveland with the basketball, right wing Alex Majewski for three. No good, rebound by Chapman and Kansas City. Moving right to left across your computer screen for the Kangaroos. Kansas City in the road, Blues moving right to left, the Bronx and the home whites moving left to right. Offensive foul on Kirksey. It's his third foul of the game. And it becomes Bronx basketball. First foul of this half. Story of this game so far, Javon Farrell has blown past the 1,000 points plateau for his career. He's already got 17 points in this game. Kangaroos. Kangaroos just received a bench warning. Head coach Kareem Richardson has been in the ear of one of the officials, all, or I guess all the officials all night. So the warning on file. A chant of let's go Bronx, let's go was starting to break out. And now a let's go, uh, I'm not sure. Make a three. Vogue with the ball on the right wing. Offensive foul, it's coming the other way. That's two now on Boga. Kansas City rolled it up. And they're going to the table. Could be a clock issue. I think the shot clock started prematurely. I think that's what happened here. And I probably the game clock too. Because remember, they rolled the ball up, so the clock shouldn't have started. But there's 32 on the shot clock now. And they caught that pretty quickly, so it's probably back at 35 or 34 and a half or something like that. They'll go with 34. 1911 on the game clock. Now we're back to action. Kirksey with the basketball on the left wing. Chapman at the top. There's the right wing, Harrison. Left wing, Kirksey. 
and a foul. Alex Majewski has picked up his first foul. Harrison comes in, loses the handle on it. It rolls to Hall. Hall along the baseline goes into the corner for Harrison and whistle blown. And they're going to the replay. I think it's a clock issue again. Now before anybody jumps to blame the clock operator, I will point out there's a system in place here. Could be a mechanical problem. When the officials blow their whistles to start a play and to stop a play, what's supposed to happen with this new system we got this year is the clock starts or the clock stops. Unfortunately, as technology tends to be, it's flawed. It doesn't always work. That's the case wherever you see it. So, the officials are going back to the replay to just see how much time is on the clock. Andy Hipscher, the Bronx associate head coach, just went over to talk to the scoreboard operator, and he he must have he, he must have said something funny because the entire uh, scorer's table erupted in laughter. I think he's just trying to uh, diffuse the situation a little, make sure the scoreboard operator today knows that it's okay. You know, I don't know if it's that person's fault or if it's a mechanical issue, but whatever it is. They'll put the shot clock at 25, the game clock at 18.47. It gave both teams a chance to draw up a play. Ball from the right corner. There's a three air ball. Williams hit out of bounds. And it remain Kangaroo's ball with 18 on the shot clock now. Harrison, right wing Kirksey. Comes to the left corner, Hall. Left wing Harrison. Harrison stops and pops, doesn't go. Rebound tip, doesn't fall either. Hines gets the board. Here come the Bronx. Farrell ahead to Boga. Gives it back to Majewski, left wing. Back to Boga to his left. Boga to Hines, inside jumper. Off the back iron, and the rebound pops out to Kirksey. Ball cycles into the corner. Comes out to the right wing. Kirksey for three. In and out. Majewski skies for the rebound. And here come the Bronx. Boga. Right wing Farrell. Left to Majewski. Right wing Hines. Baseline. Farrell underneath. And he stepped out of bounds. It's Kangaroos basketball. Well, partially because of the clock issues and partially just because of whistles and turnovers and fouls and things like that. No rhythm to start this second half. 17-37 to play. Neither team has scored yet here in the second half. They've missed a combined five shots. Kirksey with the ball on the left wing. That's top Chapman for three. No good. It was left open and Brock's probably saying, hey, you want to shoot it? Go for it. Chapman 0 for 2 from behind the arc now. Both times open looks. Boga to Majewski at the top of the left wing, Farrell. Top of the key, Majewski, the right wing, Boga. Left wing, uh, Hines. Up top to Boga. Right wing, Majewski, right corner, Farrell for three. In and out. Rebound, Kangaroos.
Farrell gets it, tried to throw it out of off of Hall to come out of bounds, but Hall managed to hold on. And now he gets the, the, of an offensive foul, so the Bronx get the ball back. So it worked out. Is a funny series of plays there. It was a good try by Farrell. Try to keep that ball by throwing it off a Kansas City player so it would be out off of him, but it didn't go out. 99 times out of 100, that play works. It's the nature of the game. We just saw the one time. Boga, right wing Hines. Hines comes along the baseline to the top of the key, Boga. Left wing Farrell. Farrell throws it up and in. First points of the half for either team. It's 40-29 Bronx. And Farrell's got 19. He's 8 of 11 from the field. Kirksey with the ball at the top. Right corner three is an air ball for Harrison. Boga's got it. Here they come. Right wing Hines. Bounce pass Leathers. Baseline. Pass was tipped. Picked up by Kirksey. Coming straight to the hoop. Has the ball knocked away by Boga into the hands of Farrell. Fires it into Cleveland. To the hoop. Lays it in. 42-29 Bronx. 15 and a half minutes to play. Kirksey, bounce to Hall. Ball cycles to the corner on the baseline. And that is a foul. A blocking foul against Leathers. Kangaroo's ball when we return 15-20 to play. 42-29 Bronx. This is Bronx basketball. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tax cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best. Back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. 15-19 to play. The Bronx lead 42-29. They've scored, scored the only four points for this second half. Kansas City basketball on the left side of your screen. Not really, it's the whole side of your screen. Harrison with the ball. Chance of defense coming from the student section. I like it. Ball tipped, recovered, and out of bounds. Bronx ball. Whoa! Kansas City ball. The call is that it hit off of one of the Bronx feet on the way out. Substitution for the Kangaroos, number 42, Kirk Corbin, replacing number 40, Trinity Hall. 
10 on the shot clock. 14.54 game clock. Paul takes a seat. Corver is in. Corver throws it into the left corner. Williams open, look at a three, and he hits it. It took five minutes and 11 seconds, but Kansas City is back on the board. Here in the second half, it's 42-32. Brock's lead cuts to 10. 14.40 to play. Leathers with the ball on the left wing. It's to the top to Hines. Left wing Farrell. Right wing Hines. Hines puts it up, rounds it in. 44-32. Corver, left wing three for Burke is good. Bronx lead is cut to nine. And the Bronx want a timeout. 30 second timeout extends to immediate timeout. So we'll step aside with 14 minutes left. The Bronx by nine. is calling the 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the Big Dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at... The 2-2. Well outside to the backstop. Everybody running real. Scores the tying run. Swing and a liner. Pass the third baseman into left field. The base hit. Front swing. Front swing. Front swing. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. 13.55 to play, and the Bronx up 44-35. Hines with the basketball out along the baseline. Comes in, pass for Cleveland off his hands, and out of bounds. It's Kangaroo's ball. Harrison, Chadman back to Harrison, right wing Burke, top to Harrison, ball cycles around to the top to Burke, right wing Williams for three, too strong, strong side rebound Cleveland, back we go the other way, Puts it off to Bogo, runs the offense, right wing Farrell, bounce to the right corner, Leathers, over to Hines, Left wing Boga. Left corner Leathers. Left wing Boga up top to Farrell. Right wing Hines. Top of the key to Farrell. Left wing Leathers. Left corner Boga for three. Doesn't go. The rebound batted into the hands of Leathers. And the Bronx get a fresh shot clock. Boga. Left wing Farrell. Top of the key to Hines. And a whistle. Third of the second 
Substitution out of the Bronx, number 21, Latte Toyvan, number two. Lori Toivin in and LJ McIntosh in. Justin Leathers and Josh Cleveland out for UTPA. 12.40 to play. Bronx by nine. Long inbounds out to Bogan near center court. Toivin in back to Boga at the top. And off to Farrell. The long jumper doesn't go. Rebound Kansas City. Harrison, left wing Burke, Burke, right wing Harrison, comes towards the basket and foul by Toivonen. Free throws coming up. Harrison gets the first. Harrison in and out. The rebound by Farrell. Boga, left wing Hines. Thought about it. Up to McIntosh. Right wing Hines. Top of the key to Farrell. Left wing Boga for the jumper. Air ball. Zans up Toivonen. Lays it up. Doesn't go. Nice rebound by the Kansas City. Harrison with the basketball at the top. Ball comes to the corner. Now the layup is good by Burke. And the Bronx lead is cut to six. And as many as nine. McIntosh finds Farrell. Out to LJ. McIntosh on the top. Now to Hines who travels. Kansas City basketball, 11.07 to play. We're up against the media timeout with the Bronx up 44-38. You are watching Bronx Basketball. is calling the 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance be there to see who will go home the big winner ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com well outside to the backstop. Everybody running. Rio scores the tying run. Swinging a liner past the third baseman in the left field. The base hits. Front swing. Front swing. Front swing. This commercial brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Welcome back out to the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. 11.07 to play. 44-38. Kansas City on a little bit of a run. 
9-2 over the last four and a half minutes. And the last six points. Bronx haven't scored in three and a half minutes. There's a strip. Here comes Boga. It's over to Farrell. Lays it up and it. Great play by Farrell. He was able to slow up just enough to let the defense run by him. And then he was able to change hands for the layup. The Bronx lead is back to eight. They've led by as many as nine. So I should check that. The Bronx actually led by as many as 13. It was 42-29 at the 16-35 mark. And now approaching the 10 minute mark and Williams has his dunk swatted. But well, that's a foul. Farrell gets called for the foul. That's his second. The Bronx have five. Free throws coming up for Williams. First trip to the line for Williams. He hits on the first. Williams having a tough night from behind the arc today. He's one of seven. 66% from the line this season. Second shot is good. Bronx lead cuts to six. Farrell comes along the baseline, throws it up. Offensive foul, and Coach Hipcher unhappy, sprung to his feet. And he screams at the official, hey, make the right call. The official screams back, hey, we're done. Nine forty-five. Ball comes to the left wing. That's Corver. The name sounds familiar, it should. As Hall hits the basket, 46-42. Carver is the brother of Atlanta Hawks guard Kyle Carver. Barrel on the baseline, totally even in up top. Boga, the right wing, McIntosh for three. Doesn't go. Rebound defensive. Kangaroos can make it a one possession game with the basket here. Carver for three. Doesn't go. The rebound offensive for Hall, who misses off the top of the backboard on the rebound by Hines. He gets fouled. That's four on the ruse. Three on Burke. Check that. One on Burke. Substitution for the Kangaroos, number 21, Fred Chapman, replaces number 42, Kirk Corver. Chapman replaces Corver. Kirksey replaces Burke. For Kansas City. It is Bronx basketball. Well, there's the basketball at the top. It's left to McIntosh. Right wing Boga. Then for Hines. And Cleveland throws it up and in. Josh Cleveland. Approaching double figures. Bronx by six, 48-42, and now Cleveland gets the rebound, his fourth. Eight and four for Cleveland today. Farrell with the ball on the right wing. Top to McIntosh. Left to Boga, back to McIntosh on the right wing. Top to Boga. McIntosh to Hines. Farrell in the lane, spins around, gets out to Bogo, left wing for three, no good. Rebound, Kansas City. There's the three ball on the way for Harrison, doesn't go, and the rebound batted out of bounds. And we are up against the media timeout, 7.44 to play, 48-42 Bronx. This is Bronx basketball. 
Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital at Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tax cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best. I'll tell you this much, I came back from commercial at the wrong time. They just announced dollar hot dogs the concession stands while supplies last. I'll be right back. Nah, just kidding. Seven forty four to play, Bronx up forty eight forty two. And it's Kansas City ball. Kansas City's been knocking on the door for a little while here in the second half. Bronx have been able to hold it shut. Foul on Hines. Justin Leathers in. Shaq Boga out. Two fouls on Hines, seven on the Bronx. And Harrison at the line for one and one. Off the front iron, Cleveland the rebound. And Farrell walks it up. Bogey getting ready to check right back in. Leathers at the top. Cleveland right elbow. Outside McIntosh. Played well lately. Farrell, the right wing, McIntosh. Throws it up, misses entirely, and the rebound off Kansas City out of bounds. Still Bronx ball. Substitution for the Bronx, number five. The field logo replaces number two, LJ McIntosh. It remains Bronx basketball. 7 7 to play. Knocked out of bounds by Hall. Farrell on the left wing. Farrell comes inside, lays it up, and in! <laughs> Javon Farrell, who else? 23 points for the grad student. Bronx lead is eight. Kansas City basketball on the left wing. That's Harrison who throws it up, doesn't go. Hines the rebound. Farrell walks it up, six and a half minutes to play. Bronx make it a four possession game with a basket, and Hines delivers! 52-42, Bronx by 10. Kirksey along the left wing. Whistle. Of the 
Foul on Boga. That's three on him, eight on the Bronx. We we'll already have more fouls in this half than we had in the entire first half. In the first half, there were 11 total fouls. Neither team reached the bonus. We have 12 total fouls with just over six minutes left. Fifty-two, forty-two, with six minutes left. Farrell at the top, left wing Boga. Top to Leathers, right wing Farrell, lobs it in for Cleveland. Down low to Hines, turnaround jumper, no good, but a foul. Off the back iron, one of two for Hines. Bronx by 11. Led by as many as 13. Not close to restoring that. Kansas City had been trying to pull close throughout the entire half with the Bronx. Uh, right back where they'd like to be with a double figures lead. See if they can get another stop to try to continue to add to this. Burke. Out of, Out of bounds. Bronx ball with 5 and 11 to play. It is Bronx basketball. <laughs> Substitution for the Kangaroos, number 10, Jacoby Bledsoe replaces number 3, John Burke. Boga racing to the basket, layup, short. Rebound, Kansas City. Williams goes left corner, Hall for three, and it's good. 53-45 in Kansas City. Calls for a timeout, and this comes to the point of the game where Kansas City trying to come back. They're going to start using those timeouts judiciously as they try and figure out the best spots to do it when they want to draw up a couple of plays. They'll probably draw up two plays potentially in this timeout. I would guess they won't call another one until after the next media timeout, assuming it comes pretty quickly. And then they try to save one for the end. If you can get close, but the trick is you want to make sure it is close, so you do what you got to do with your timeouts up to then. Four forty-eight to play, and the Bronx up by eight. Javon Farrell, 23. 10 of 14 from the field.
And Farrell nails another three. The Bronx lead back in double figures. Trying to answer Chapman, get in the foul. Chapman misses. Cleveland the rebound. Over to Farrell. Farrell tries to come up along the sideline. He gets fouled with 4.09 to play. Harrison picks up his second. That's six on Kansas City. Hmm. I wonder if they're about to foul in the one and one. Boga gets the announcement. It's a full court man to man. 30 on the clock. He gets across half court. Lose the handle of the ball out of bounds. It stays with the Bronx. Try to force a, a turnover and then maybe you foul. That sixth foul seemed like it was almost on purpose to get to six. So that way you'd be in the one and one. Huh. It is a little early for that, but not necessarily. As Farrell has trouble with it and. He gets fouled. Kansas City was hoping for a turnover there, not necessarily a foul. Farrell at the free throw line, in and out on the first. Probably not the situation where Kansas City wanted to use up one of their one and ones, but if, it, if they had to get the foul there, they at least have that consolation that no points were scored. They get two more of those. There's the dunk by Hall. Bronx lead is cut to 7, 56-49. Bogo we'll across the timeline. Three and a half minutes left. Left wing Farrell. To his left to Hines. Hines along the baseline. And we're up against our final media timeout. 3.20 to go. 56-49 Kangaroos. Or check that. 56-49 Bronx. Excuse me. This is Bronx basketball. Here, we understand how a team is the result of being part of something larger than yourself. Creating a better outcome and a better tomorrow. Doctors Hospital at Renaissance is proud to support the University of Texas Pan American Bronx. Dr. Pena, does LASIK surgery work? LASIK surgery is America's most frequently performed elective procedure. In fact, I've helped thousands of patients see better. Dr. Pena. Call me Raulito. Thousands and thousands. Raulito, are you sure? Is that thing on? Yes. Follow me. I had to put him somewhere. It's a big project. That's a lot of successful operations. Call Dr. Raulito Pena at 661-UC. The phone keeps ringing. Gotta make room. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Come in today and claim your Red Tax cash on just about all of our Buick and GMC inventory. It's the Red Tax Sales Event at South Texas Buick GMC. Not the biggest, just the best.
Back we are at the UTPA Fieldhouse. Jonah Goldberg riding with you. There's 3.20 on the clock, and the Bronx lead 56-49. Hines inbounds to Boga on the left wing. Boga gets to Hines at the top to the right wing, Cleveland. Or check that, Leathers. Leathers inside to Farrell, lays it up and in. Javon Farrell continues to be red hot. He's got 28 points. The Bronx lead 58-49. Three minutes left in the half, or in the game rather. Williams with the basketball for Kansas City. Williams again. Now it comes to the top to Burke. The Hall. Burke right wing for three. No good. And the rebound, Farrell. Farrell will start up the offense for UTPA. 28 points. That's a new career high for him. Hines. That's a down low to Bogo, lays it in! Jack Bogo, the Bronx are pulling away. It's 60-49 with 2.17 to go. Time out! Kansas City! Two seventeen to go and the Bronx up 60 to 49. What a game for Javon Farrell today. I think I know who you'll be hearing from on Bronx Country this week. Twelve of sixteen from the field. Uh, Twelve field goals are career high. As well as the points. He's got five rebounds, four assists, two steals just for good measure. One man wrecking crew. He came in three points short of a thousand, and he is blown by that mark. Kansas City ball. Williams, that's the left wing, Harrison. Left corner, Williams. Williams comes in, skip pass out to the right wing, Burke. Burke, top of the key, Harrison. All cycles into the corner. There's the three from Corver. It's good. Bronx lead is cut to 60-52, and the Kangaroos want another 30-second timeout. They are blowing through their timeouts now. They got it. They're down eight with a minute 56 left. I know they have their full left. I'm not sure if they have another 30 or not after this. Probably find out pretty soon. <laughs> Bronx of Boga, Farrell, Hines, Leathers, and Cleveland, the Kangaroos, Burke, Harrison, Williams, Chapman, and Hall. And Bogo runs the offense. Doubled in the backcourt, gets it up to Hines, now to Farrell. Farrell gives it back to Boga. His left to Farrell, and his left to Hines. Hines up top to Leathers. And back to Farrell. Minute 28 left. Farrell with three on the shot clock, two, one at the buzzer, got it! Javon Farrell has 30 points, and the Bronx lead 62-52. There's a minute 10 left. And Farrell just jumped into the first row of seats. <laughs> wow! Big smile on Javon Farrell's face. He has 30 points. He has more points. He has as many points as the top three scorers on Kansas City combined. 
and more points than the next four scores. On the, I mean, he has half the Bronx points. Thirty out of sixty-two. Amazing. Just amazing what he's doing today. Burke, Corver at the top. Tri contested three is good. Bronx lead has cut to seven. Well, Hines is bringing it up, gets it to Leathers. There's only one man I'm giving the ball to tonight. Whistle blown. And a foul call. Personal foul is on number 42, Kurt Corver. It's called for a second foul. Hipshire got in a couple of quick words for his team. That's eight, so that means a one and one coming up for Justin Leathers. Leathers making his first trip to the line today. It's on the first. Leathers, an 84% free throw shooter. Off the back iron on the second, rebound Kangaroos. Harrison brings it up, swatted by Boga. And a foul call, and Shaq Boga is not happy. That's four on Boga. Harrison to the line. It's on the first. Substitution for the Bronx, number two, LJ McIntosh. It is a seven point game. It'll become a two possession game. Harrison hits his next one. LJ McIntosh in, Josh Cleveland out. Second shot is good. It's a six point game. Kobe Bledsoe in. Frank Williams takes a seat. Forty point two ticks of the clock remaining. Hines bounce is stolen. Harrison shot no good, but a foul. Two point three seconds came off the clock on that exchange, so we're at thirty seven point nine. And it can be on a four-point game if Harrison hits his free throws here. That's three fouls now on Hines. Harrison, three of five from the line for eight points today. Good on the first. And the second. Substitution for the Kangaroos, number one, Nelson Kirksey. Three places, number 31, Johnson. Kirksey and Johnson out for Kansas City. Full court press is on for Kansas City. Farrell gets it into McIntosh. McIntosh fires it ahead to Leathers. Leathers leaves it back for Hines, who gets fouled. It's four on Burke. So Hines will head to the line for a one and one. Hines hits the first. 64-59, he'll get a second. And first, the Bronx are going to call for a 30-second 
timeout. Want to drop their defense with 32.6 seconds left and the shot clock off. One more free throw coming up for Hines. Bronx are off the line. They don't want to risk committing a foul on the rebound. Hines connects. 65-59, it's back to a full two possession game. Cleveland in, Leathers out. There's the three up, no good. The rebound, Cleveland. And he got fouled. Personal foul is on number three, John Burke. His fifth, he has fouled out. John Burke just fouled out. I'll give these teams 30 seconds to discuss what Kansas City decided to, to bring in. Cleveland off the back iron. One good free throw could make it a three possession game with 24.8 seconds remaining. Second shot good, 66-59. Kansas City quickly down the court. Harrison coming straight to the hoop, cuts underneath, stops, puts it up, doesn't go. Cleveland the rebound and he gets hacked. Harrison just picked up his second foul. Or his third, rather. Fifteen point eight seconds left. Cleveland back in the line. One for two today. Two for three. He's in double figures. That's ten points. Cleveland won a five for six from the line last game. It's another one. Bronx lead is nine with 15 seconds left. Ball in the left corner, Williams a three, no good. Rebound comes back out to Williams, who tries another three. This one doesn't fall either. Cleveland gets the rebound, two, one. This game is over! This one belongs to the Bronx. A 68-59 victory. For the UTPA Bronx over the Kansas City Kangaroos. A heck of a way to finish. Take a look at some of those final numbers in just a second. As Kansas City, we'll start with them, led by 
Tierney Hall, who scored 12 points on four of eight shooting. Four rebounds. 10 points for Fred Chapman, 10 for Martez Harrison. Harrison two of seven, Chapman five of seven, Hall four for eight. After that it was seven, or rather eight points for Burke, seven for Williams, six for Corver, four for Kirksey, and two for Bledsoe. The Kangaroos, 41% from the field, they were 20 of 49. 8 of 24 from behind the arc, that's 33%, and 11 for 17 from the line. That is 65%. There were 12, 27 rebounds for Kansas City. The Bronx had 34 rebounds as we take a look at the Bronx final numbers. Bronx led in scoring by Javon Farrell, career high 30 points. 13 of 17 shooting, 2 of 6 from behind the arc, 2 of 3 from the line, 5 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals. 11 points, Shaq Boga, 4 of 10 shooting, 1 of 4 from behind the arc, 2 of 3 from the line, 2 boards, 4 assists, 2 steals. 11 points for Josh Cleveland on 4 of 4 shooting, 3 of 4 from the line, 7 rebounds. 9 points for Shaquille Hines, 3 of 4 shooting, 3 of 4 from the line, 7 rebounds, 3 assists, a block and a steal. 4 points, Justin Leathers, 3 points, LJ McIntosh. The Bronx, 26 of 50 from the field, that's 52%. 5 of 20 from behind the arc, and 11 for 16 from the line. Points in the paint, the Bronx led that 28-22. Off of turnovers, the Bronx led 15-7. Second chance points, 6-2 in favor of the Bronx. Fast break points, 2-0 in favor of the Bronx. Bench points, 16-7 in favor of Kansas City. There were two lead changes and one tie. We give you all these numbers, but the only ones that matter. 68-59, the Bronx beat the Kangaroos at the UTPA Fieldhouse. Well, the Bronx have won two in a row, and they just completed their second consecutive season sweep as they sweep Kansas City. The Bronx improved to 8 and 19. They're 4 and 8 in whack play. Kansas City falls to 7 and 17. 4 and 7 in whack play. The Bronx led today by Javon Farrell who reached the 1000 points plateau on his second basket and just kept going. Bronx are back in action on Thursday as they host defending WAC champion New Mexico State. It's a 7 o'clock start. We'll be on the air with you at 6.45 right here on 956sports.com. Our next Bronx broadcast of any type is baseball. Tomorrow, noontime start, 11.50 pregame. It's actually 12.05 first pitch as the Bronx face, against, face off against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. They've already taken two out of three in the series, looking to clinch a series victory tomorrow. That's also here on 956sports.com. That'll do it for us from the UTPA Fieldhouse. I'd like to thank everybody out there for tuning in. This has been a presentation of Bronx Basketball. For more information, you can log on to utpabronx.com. If you ever want to reach us, contact info is up on the website under Inside Athletics. Click on Staff Directory. But for now, for Jim Bob Sides in the control room and the entire camera crew, this is Jonah Goldberg saying good night. The UTPA Fieldhouse, Bronx win, 68-59. Oh yeah, I've got 69 percent. There you go, you see. Can you Clorox that thing first? Good brothers. Yeah, right. Okay, perfect.